Live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE. Covering DockerCon 2016. Brought to you by Docker. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for DockerCon 2016. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Brian Gracely, another hot startup up here, Robin Systems. We've got the CEO and CTO, CEO from All Butch and Partha Sitala, CTO of Robin Systems. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you guys again. Um, again, you're, you guys are a startup. It's got 15 million in funding um, last fall. You're doing something a little bit different with storage unshackling applications to have a container platform. So, explain that. It seems to be a lot of people focusing on storage to make storage go faster, better, all flash, all we see all the time. But you guys take a different approach. Explain, take a minute and explain what you guys do specifically and why it's not just another storage container startup. So, what we are doing really is looking at how to apply containers to the problem of virtualization. Um, storage is a piece of it, but it is not everything. Uh, really when we look at uh, applications like uh, databases, applications that consume a lot of data, big data, Hadoop, Spark, even NoSQL database like Mongo, Cassandra, what we see is that these are traditionally run on bare metal. Virtualization hasn't really made a lot of headway because there are performance issues with the hypervisor performance stacks. Uh, containers are a great solution. They eliminate a lot of their hypervisor performance stacks, but they haven't really addressed the issue of data gravity. When you've got terabytes of data, how do you really make, make that portable so that you can get all the applications virtualized on containers? So you're not and a storage startup, you're a software startup. Exactly, and software so software. We, we believe that you need to look at the whole virtualization problem end to end. If you really want to truly solve the performance issues, provide performance isolation when you pack multiple applications on the same physical hardware and do that in the context of containers. Yeah, so it's a very different approach. You've got a lot of things going on. You've got software-defined storage, people are still working through. You've got containers, which a lot of times is very kind of new application-centric. We're seeing this movement back to people saying, hey, wait, it works for enterprise applications as well. Like, walk us through how you guys think about performance when you're dealing with software, you're not dealing with hardware anymore. Like, help customers understand that mindset, because that you know, hasn't necessarily been the case with storage and data management in the past. It's been very hardware-centric. Yeah, so, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the big difference between the traditional app that's containerized today and the enterprise apps is that the enterprise app is more complex and its need for the, from the storage side is more complex, right? Yeah. But beyond that, once an enterprise app is deployed, there's this lifecycle management that becomes very important. Right. Things like snapshotting, things like cloning. Or when it's done in the context of storage, just a storage subsystem, that, that problem has been solved. Right. Once you elevate that to an application construct, that is more complicated especially with the modern day distributed applications. You're not talking about a single volume that's being snapshotted, but you're essentially looking at a collection of volumes that spans the entire topology of an application, and in fact spans the entire service that an application depends on, right? a database, an application server, and so on, right? Yeah. The entire life cycle has to be done from that context. And again, from the performance point of view also, right? if you look at a complex service, which has databases on the bottom and an application service on the top, each of them might have a different performance need. Right, in terms of an IOPS or throughput and so on, right? Yeah. So essentially you've got to enforce the IOPS or the throughput, uh, the, the upper and the lower limits based on what the application needs. Yeah. So that essentially changes once you look, I mean essentially infrastructure management changes once you look at it from the, from the application's context. Yeah. So all the big folks, we had Jerry Chen from Greylock on who always likes to come on theCUBE, he's been a CUBE alumni since we started and uh, He's always got his finger on the pulse. I asked him the question, where's the focus? And he was talking about chat bots and all this stuff. And what he pointed out was really kind of where you guys are having core focus. And that's the applications are driving the infrastructure policy stack characteristics. Um, one, do you agree with that? And two, how do you talk to customers who say, hey, I want the infrastructure just to work. I have VMware, I got virtualization, I want to virtualize, but I want my app workload to be really awesome and right. fast and guaranteed. I mean, what's the conversation like? Tell, take us through that. So, I mean, so far we've been looking at either infrastructure and isolation of apps, right? You're looking at the storage, you're looking at just containers by themselves and so on, right? So the conversation that we have with customers is essentially what can we do for their applications? How can we essentially move application awareness into the infrastructure, right? Uh, and that, that essentially drives a bunch of use cases that you would not really look at if you're 
a pure play, let's say a storage for containers or a pure play orchestration, for example, right? Uh, you want to add something? No? No. Is that their pain point, orchestration? I mean, where's the aha moment for your customers, for you guys, when you generally walk uh, in aha there? Aha moment, I would say, is predictability, right? Performance predictability, at the same time, giving the consolidation. Right? I mean, that is something that you cannot achieve today, right? The moment you essentially put multiple apps on the same host, whether it's containerized or not, the predictability is gone, right? And in fact, some of the demos that you're showing at, showing at our booth, that, that you know, customers come and ask us, how do you guys do that, right? How do you essentially enforce both max IOPS, min IOPS, and how do you do it across multiple apps? So what do they focus on when you guys give them the demo, when they ask those questions, obviously they're impressed, they're trying to dig into the, what the value is, and when you're at Secret Sauce, your IP, but what gets their attention? What's the, what's the one thing that, uh, in the demo that you guys are showing that gets the customer's attention? How do you do it, I guess, right? <laughs> How do you magic. enforce? Yeah, it's magic. Right? <laughs> so you, you talked about big data, you talked about Hadoop, you talked about Spark, you know, some of these you know, kind of fast moving things, a big deal for business, because it, it drives better intelligence. You know, infrastructure has always been a little more, it's, it's a little slower moving, it's resilient for a reason. I mean, is what you guys are doing really trying to, to disrupt that balance that says, if the applications are going that much faster, it's got to be software, it's got to be deliver performance, but I, I need to, to make it simple to deploy, simple to, to move things. Is that really the, the, the you know, John's talking about the aha moment, but is that really the thing that people are looking for a new balance, a new equation for, uh, to make that work? Yeah. So a lot of people we are talking to, they are trying to figure out what all these new big data applications mean for infrastructure. Yeah. And in many cases, they are kind of kicking tires trying to figure out what they do with containers, infrastructure, storage requirements, what the applications are going to be like tomorrow, yeah. uh, and how do we future-proof uh, the in, uh, infrastructure. And I think that's a conversation where we are essentially an infrastructure layer, application agnostic, yeah. but we provide them that whole future-proof portability. That's what they get some interest in. Yeah. And are you guys, do you have the capability if somebody says, I want to start small on top of Amazon or Azure, and but also have a an on-premises deployment. Can you can you link the two together? Are there ways to take advantage of different sort of resources? Yeah. So today, most of our customers are on-premise customers, but we have several conversations going on on the hybrid cloud aspect, where they are trying to move some of their workload into the cloud, yeah. and how they can do it with a single pane of management, uh, with Robin being sort of the common layer gotcha. that enables them to do that. So you guys talk about the application-centric uh, data center or application-defined. Um, um, uh, Software-defined is pretty much what's been the big buzzword, but application specifically, what on the product side, how do you explain that to customers and they say, what does that mean to, well, first, what is application-defined data center mean to you guys? So, if you look at virtualization, um, the traditional virtualization gives you VMs as a proxy to physical machines. When it comes to deploying applications, you still need to coordinate between the VMs to get the application up and running. What we are saying is that on top of providing that entire virtualization stack, compute network storage, we're also adding an extra layer of abstraction so that the customer, the user only needs to worry about deploying an application at a level of give me 10 node cluster. And we are doing all the plumbing beneath that. So the whole combining that image management, deployment, orchestration, along with the, uh, the traditional compute network storage virtualization, that when you put it all together, that's what we really talk uh, mean when you say application defined data. So, so uh, Parth, I got to ask you the product question. Okay. Um, you guys are startups, so obviously you're, you're you know, pedaling as fast as you can, you got customers, um, you got some big names on the case studies you're working with. What's the product focus right now as priorities for engineering? What's the, and obviously the basic, get stuff out solid shipping, but what new things are you guys working on? What's the roadmap look like uh, for Robin Systems? So, I mean, we have started off with uh, focusing on data applications, and at least in the near term, we want to essentially focus on that and have a more complete story, so that we essentially span all types of apps. At the last cube we did at uh, Strata, we showed a demo of how we do Hadoop and how customers are running Hadoop, right? We're expanding that to a lot of other applications like Oracle, uh, Cassandra, Mongo, modern day, as well as the traditional enterprise databases and so on, right? And then the next step for us essentially would be to essentially expand this from just an on-prem solution into the cloud. And when you say cloud, it's not just taking cloud and then deploying our software there, but essentially taking the characteristics of a cloud, its instant expandability and you know, the elasticity that you get with cloud, and then weave that into our product so that the customer gets a very seamless experience deploying these apps. So compare and contrast the Hadoop ecosystem to the Docker ecosystem. We love to talk about the Hadoop because we've been covering it for a long time. We've seen the evolution, and our, our point at the last Strata was, we're still seeing customers saying, it's still complex, I mean it's getting better, certainly, but it's still complex and the total cost of ownership is high. 
Right. And, but it's getting better, it's just certainly working, big data, no brainer. Docker, we're trying to tease out the same thing. It's complex in the sense there's a lot of noise here, people who do different parts in the stack. How would you guys compare the two ecosystems? Because Docker seems a little bit more um, uh, agile in terms of uh, less cost, because it's very developer focused. Um, but we're trying to put our finger on cost of ownership, and can you guys comment about your thoughts on the two ecosystems? Well, Okay, so uh, since you brought up two examples, right, Docker and Hadoop, right? So I think the, the way you look at the problem is very different. I think the way you look at the problem from a Docker angle is a very container specific thing, right? It's not really application specific yet, and I'll expand a little bit on what that means. But when you look at a more complex application, it's not just one container. It's not even just a collection of containers. It's basically a group of containers playing different roles and all of them are interconnected with each other, right? And each of them depends on the other for different things, right? And when we deploy these things, right, and we essentially want the customer to look at it not from a container or like frameworks at a virtual machine, but look at it from a pure application perspective. This would take an example, right? Let's say you're deploying Cassandra, right? You would go and say, I want to deploy a Cassandra cluster. You don't go and say, I want to have these many VMs. You say, I need Cassandra. It requires this amount of scalability, so I'm going to create out. those many number of partitions. Yep. Each of those partitions requires different IOPS. How do I set it up, right? So you essentially define your application needs from the context of an so application. So move out of speeds right? and fees, just getting, standing up the resource, right? basically. Yes. And Hadoop has had some... So Hadoop is actually a very big example of that, right? Because yeah. Hadoop is a very complex thing. Just to get a Hadoop cluster going is very difficult. And in our product, it's essentially a push of a button. You define, yeah. you go to the application, uh, creation page, and just say click. The easy button, as they would say. Easy button, one <laughs> click. One click deploy of any complex data application. Okay, so I got to ask the question on the website. You say unshackle your apps. What does that mean when you say unshackle your applications? What do you guys do to unshackle apps? So, uh, let's say you are deploying a virtual machine today. You as a developer yeah. are using a virtual machine. Very rarely do you know where it is running. All you know is you go to the virtual uh, machine or the, the VDI, let's say admin, and you say I want to get a VDI thing, right? You don't, you don't really care about where it's being deployed. We essentially want developers to look at application deployment in the same way. Forget about asking for hosts. You say, I want to deploy this app, right? So once you do that, you're essentially taking away applications from being dependent on infrastructure to just defining what you want and you just get that magical thing. So the whole composable infrastructure kind of narrative that's been kicking around, certainly HP's riding that uh, happy, right. is what you guys are offering. Exactly, and uh, particularly for the applications that we are going after, they tend to be run on bare metal silos. So when you talk about unshackling, it's about that fluidity, the portability that we are talking about, where you don't really need to do physical provisioning for specific machines. We can completely take away the uh, deployment times, the provisioning times, and make it all portable. That's a key part of the unshackling. Yeah. This is a real changeover. Guys, I'd like you guys to spend a minute, talk to the audience about um, Robin Systems, take a minute to share. They could be potential customers out there watching. Why Robin Systems? Why should they be engaging with you guys? I think today the biggest problem that we see with data heavy uh, applications is that there is no real solution that allows the high performance and performance isolation that you get with bare metal silos with the flexibility, the agility, the portability you go with things like containers and VMs. We are trying to bridge that gap. And I think what you get by working with Robin Systems is a seamless, fluid infrastructure where you can maximize your hardware utilization, but also make it uh, very easy to manage and deploy applications. So you know, we are we have big focus on this delightfully uh, easy to use uh, interface, where you take away all the complexity of the plumbing out, so that you can just focus on what matters to you, which is application management, and we take care of all the headaches with managing infrastructure behind that. Take, taking the complexity out of DevOps, taking all that complexity out of the, the ops side, building into software, like you said, you know, I, I want Hadoop, just give me Hadoop. I want Cassandra, just give me Cassandra. So it's, I and mean, we've talked about that in a That's research. That's the way it should work. Yeah, we've talked about that from a research perspective. We think there's going to be about $300 billion out of that big cloud market that's just going to get embedded back into software yeah. and take it, out of, take it out of operations costs, so. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of the trend. famous Steve Jobs, uh, when he took over Apple, he moved away from speeds and feeds to, you know, kind Outcomes. of solutions and, mm -hmm. you know, what are we trying to do kind of thing. So, that's awesome. Well, final question I want to ask you guys, a little, put a little different spin on the, uh, the question is, what's the coolest thing that you've seen uh, your technology be used for in a customer scenario? So I think, uh, you know, for me, the most exciting thing has been how one of our customers who was really struggling 
to figure out whether to go on cloud, whether to stay on bare metal, they had this silos day, looked at our solution, and shut down both of their uh, cloud and the bare metal plans, and we are going to use you to virtualize the entire uh, you know, um, uh, deployment, and that, you know, when that aha moment happened to them, and you know, they changed their entire strategy and moved completely lock, stock, and barrel behind uh, you know, a Robin-based solution, that was very exciting. Selfishly, as a startup, you know, it's, uh, it's a great first moment when Validation. the first customer really gets it, right? Yeah. Totally gets it. Uh, and they that the move, part, yeah. completely change their infrastructure over. Absolutely. You think you agree that's your coolest Absolutely. moment? Absolutely. What's the coolest technology that you have in the secret sauce uh, tool <laughs> chest that uh, customers go crazy for? Can you share any, any uh, tidbits on the IP? Well, as, I mean, from a technology perspective, I, don't, I have not seen any company essentially bring uh, applications into infrastructure, essentially making infrastructure more application aware, right? Which actually spans a bunch of things from a technology perspective. It's not just not storage, it's also thinking about lifecycle management. So I think that is the core IP that we have. Uh, I've not yeah, seen anyone it's a winning do that. formula, application aware, fluid, fluid infrastructure, pools yeah. of resource. Robin Systems here on theCUBE, guys, thanks so much. Uh, Co-founder, yeah. hot startup here at DockerCon 2016, it's theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Brian Gracie. We'll be right back, you're watching theCUBE.